Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about melter weapons in Space Marines 2. A weapon that's both a powerhouse and a bit of a gamble. These weapons have been my and the community's go-to weapons in PvE as it demolishes enemy swarms, it hits stuns, majors enemies, and sometimes even heals you. These things are all about that close range insane damage when you're right up in someone's face. But are they all always the best choice for PvP? Not exactly. Today we're going to break down the pros and cons so you know when to use them and when to leave them behind. Before I show you their in-game performance, let's take a quick look at the two melted weapons available in-game. First up, there's the tactical version. It's got 8 damage with a 5 shot magazine. Mag size isn't super important here as you rarely get the chance to dump all 5 shots in one go, but reloading is a thing with this one. 10 piercing. Uh, I think this is just below the last fusil, or it's tied for the best in the game, which means it's, uh, if enemies are stacked up, it's going to go right through them. But the range is so short that you're probably going to only hit one person anyways, at least with meaningful damage. Then there's the heavy version. The heavy version has slightly more damage with 8 plus or 8.5. This one doesn't need to reload, but when you do aim down sights with the heavy, it puts you in a slower heavy stance, which can make you more vulnerable if you're caught out in the open. In my opinion, both weapons are pretty similar overall, but the heavy weapon technically has ever so slightly higher damage output. In practice though, I didn't feel any difference in handling or time to kill. When you're within the melter's effective range, it's over for whoever's in front of you. There's a pretty satisfying feeling when you melt through an enemy's health bar almost instantly. But, because of its range and shotgun-like playstyle, sometimes you line up the perfect shot only to watch your enemy walk away with a sliver of health. Also, if somebody's meleeing you, uh, and you're going to be in melee range a lot, sometimes the shots to kill line up with the incoming melee damage you're taking, so you end up trading or dying. So I think it's a pretty risky weapon overall, especially because both the tactical and heavy have such reliable automatic bolter weapons. Now we're talking about close range weapons, we have to talk about the other close range king of this game, which is the Bolt Carbine SMG. The SMG can occasionally out DPS melter weapons in certain scenarios. You wouldn't think it, but with their high fire rate, SMGs can chip away your health so fast that you end up losing the fight, even if you land a few hits with the melta. Part of the issue is you need to be extremely close to your target for the melter to do its job, and in that short range, SMGs can overwhelm you with the constant fire. The melter just doesn't deliver the same level of, of reliability. It feels like you have to work a lot harder to make uh, them perform at their best. Whereas with the SMG, which is available to the tactical and sniper, just keeps laying down that pressure without having to uh, put as much effort or put yourself in as much risk. The next really important thing is their, the map performance. So the melter weapons really, really depend on the map you're playing on. It's pretty fantastic on Mausoleum, which is what you're seeing right now, uh, and pretty solid on Bastion, where the map layout supports these close range engagements. You can use the tight spaces and corners to your advantage, ambushing enemies and getting those uh, close range devastating shots. Bastion, uh, the green map, though, can still be a little tricky. The ranges and sight lines sometimes leave you a little exposed uh, before you can get in close enough to do the damage. And then there's Cathedral, now, which is basically a, a no-go for Meltas. It's a huge map with lots of open areas and players tend to be much more spread out. You're going to struggle to get close enough to do any real damage and by the time you do you might have already been uh, ranged down. It's a map that demands more versatility and the Melta weapons just don't have the range or consistency to be effective there. So, the next question, should you play with the Melter Rifles on Tactical or Heavy? So the Melter does have some perks when used with the Heavy class. The Iron Halo Shield gives you a bit more survivability, which is important when you're playing such a high risk weapon. You need that extra protection because closing the distance can leave you pretty vulnerable. The Shield gives you the breathing room to survive a bit longer and get off uh, the crucial shot. But it's also pretty decent on the Tactical class I found. The big advantage here is being able to carry two shot grenades, which is great for setting up kills. You can stun enemies, close the gap, and then hit them with the Melta. It's a good combination, though the tactical is a bit squishier, so you'll need to be a bit more cautious when using it this way. Personally, I like it better on the heavy, I think it just suits them better, but this one's really up to you. 
now that we've talked about the classes and the maps, let's talk about the game modes. I think the melted weapons perform better in objective-based game modes like capture and control. In these game modes, you're often pushing hard into the enemy lines or holding tight spaces, which is where the melters thrive, in my opinion. The high risk, high reward playstyle works there because the objectives force players to come to you or push into choke points where you can land those close range shots. In more kill based modes like Annihilation, they lose some of their edge. These modes tend to be more about positioning and picking your fights from safer ranges. Uh, since mel melter rifles are so reliant on getting up close, they're harder to use effectively in open engagements where you need to be more flexible. If you're not getting into those tight situations, you're in a uh, disadvantage. So what's my final verdict on the melter weapons? They're fun, no doubt about that, but they're also pretty situational. You can pull off some amazing plays when everything lines up, but they're not going to be the weapon of choice in every situation. If you want something more reliable across all different maps and all different game modes, I think there's better options out there. For example, for tactical players, the heavy assault bolter is, is really good. You got 45 rounds, good piercing, good damage, and it's probably your best bet for all situations and without the limitations of range. And for the heavy class, the heavy bolter is just a solid, solid all-arounder weapon uh, that works well on all maps. So while these melter rifles have their moments, I wouldn't count on them uh, as your go-to choice if you're looking for consistent performance. I would say they are a pretty good weapon though, maybe A tier or like high B tier-ish weapon. So that's all my thoughts uh, on the melter weapons. I'm gonna leave you guys with some more melter gameplay. Hope you enjoyed and catch you in the next one. What? My, my team just disconnected. Maybe Steam probably just got a stroke. <laughs> Fuck, didn't he live? 